In a community access teaching module, I want to add a disclaimer that when your work is to be connecting people into the community, you need to know your community and be involved in it as well. You need to have a strong idea of what role you're connecting the person into, or at least be willing to ask some good questions. You should ask yourself if you have a clear idea of what is expected or of other community members who are in this role, and that knowledge will help guide you. There are four guiding principles that help me make good decisions as a community access specialist. Those are promote competency, remember that image matters, relationships are everything, and make contribution happen. With the guiding principle of promoting competency, when connecting a person with community, you need to consider where the person is, what experience the person has, and what needs to be explored further with the person so that they're able to further develop their competencies. You need to also make sure the person has as much opportunity to make an informed decision in the process. And the way to do that is to ensure that the person is a part of each step of that process. Take Joel for example. When we started partnering with Joel, we realized that he was a man who really loved to be social and always was quick to laugh. Uh, he is someone who really loves being on the phone. He makes calls to a lot of folks in the middle of the day, and he's eager to try new things. When we started thinking about what kind of experiences Joel had, however, we realized that we couldn't really work with a lot because he didn't have a lot of great experiences in his life. Uh, so we started exploring. We learned that he is passionate about a lot of things, and what stood out was his interest in environmental justice and the local food movement. He also proved to be a salesman. He went to a presentation on a book related to health and convinced his occupational therapist to buy it. He started going to a farmer's market where the supporter who was working with him at the time knew the manager. Joe's outgoing personality went well with the people there because it was loud and open. He was welcomed into the steering committee uh, for the market. Joel and his support team had to decide how it was going to look for him to step into the role of a vendor at a local uh, farmer's market. So when we were getting started, the team had quite a few hiccups, mostly because Joel wasn't involved in every decision that the team was making. Joel wasn't going to the store to pick up the sodas. He wasn't involved in the inventory, the counting of the sodas. Uh, he was taking at our word what the pricing of the sodas needed to be. And so we started to step back a little bit and we started to think about what is it that so, uh, Joel needs to be involved in to, to be more successful and to have the opportunity to learn what it takes. Joel has gone to the business that hosts the farmer's market in his parking lot and has negotiated alongside a supporter for uh, a fridge so that he can keep his sodas on site. He's worked out uh, a deal with the coordinator of the farmer's market so that she can pick up a bag of ice for him because that's something that he can't do but that he needs, uh, but he needs for himself to be successful. He sets up all of his rides to and from the market and uh, he's currently working out a system for accepting money from people that works really well for him. Remember, people are not going to be 100% ready, and they're not going to have all of the competency needed to do a role in the community. And that's okay, there's no reason not to pursue something with someone. And believe me, that's why other people are there and that they're able to step in. The second guiding principle is image matters. Imagine you're going to a job interview or to your Pilates class at the gym or on a first date with someone that you're attracted to. You really want to look the part, right? I focus on three aspects of image when considering getting people connected. Those aspects are the group I'm connecting the person with, the person I'm supporting, and myself. When thinking about the group, I ask myself what it is that people in the group do to communicate that they belong. Is there a dress code? Do people tend to wear their hair a certain way? Do they wear a badge? Do they all carry a Heine Brothers or a Starbucks coffee mug? These are aspects of the group that communicate that role. I would make sure that the person that I'm helping to get connected is aware of what those types of communicators are 
and that they try to adopt as many of those as possible so that they can be seen as a truly belonging member in the group. For the people we support, we tend to advise people not to wear anything that depicts childlike images like Garfield or Barney. Uh, because we have to remember that people with disabilities have historically been put into the role of eternal child. It is our role, our duty, for people to be seen as competent. I've met several people who have said, oh, we shouldn't be telling people what to wear, and we're not. We're just having conversations with people and their loved ones, in some instances, if those loved ones are involved with decisions about the very real consequences of what that type of imagery will have on people truly accepting them. Those who say that image doesn't matter are not going to do well within the role of helping others connect in a dignifying and respectful way. We also have to have strong expectations for supporters. Uh, I like to say that you're kind of like a chameleon. If you're working in the morning to assist a person at their job and then you go uh, and meet another person at the gym at 3 o'clock because that's when their Pilates class is about to get started and you want to help them get set up and by 8 o'clock you're assisting another person with getting connected at a bar, then you need a different outfit for each of those situations. When that situation happens for me, I have three outfits packed in my trunk ready to go. I will also like to say, as a little plug, that never, really never in any situation are sweatpants acceptable when doing community access work. 